Regardless of what happens on November 3rd or the following days or weeks after when we find out the results of the election or wait for the results of the election, I think that everyone collectively is bracing for chaos. And this is because of Donald Trump. If he wins, then that's another four years of Donald Trump inflicting pain and suffering on Americans, only caring about himself. But if he loses, theoretically, you'd think that that'd be cause for celebration among the more rational-minded people in the country. But you have to worry, even if you get a victory, because Donald Trump may try to shake things up by saying, you know what, this election was a fraud and I don't accept the results. I mean, he won't even accept that he lost the debate after we got multiple polls showing that he lost the debate. He still won't even accept that he lost the popular vote even though he won the Electoral College. So whatever he does, we're all going to be watching closely because we're hoping for the best, but ultimately bracing for the worst because what he does is going to have an impact on what happens on the ground because there are a lot of right-wing groups that are willing to do violence at the behest of Donald Trump if he gives them the go-ahead. And this should worry everyone, not just because of what Trump is saying, but because the FBI is even warning everyone to anticipate an uptick in violence among far-right groups because of Donald Trump. Now, The Nation published this report from Ken Klippenstein the day after the debate where he details an intelligence report issued by the FBI, and this report warns of violence by a far-right extremist group between now and and Inauguration Day. Klebenstein explains, the report obtained exclusively by The Nation entitled Boogaloo Adherents Likely Increasing Anti-Government Violent Rhetoric and Activities Increasing Domestic Violent Extremist Threat in the FBI Dallas Area of Responsibility warns of the threat posed by the far-right militia group known as the Boogaloos. Marked for official use only and law enforcement sensitive, the document was prepared by the FBI's Dallas field office and is dated September 29, 2020. It draws on a wide array of intelligent sources, making specific mention of human sources, suggesting that the Bureau may have confidential informants within the group. The document points to several catalysts for the rise in the group's membership, including resentment over perceived government overreach embodied by the COVID-19 shutdown and the presidential election. The word boogaloo refers to a second American civil war, which the loosely organized, fiercely anti-government group has declared its intention to bring about. Its members often wear an outfit of military fatigues and a Hawaiian shirt. While the Boogaloos clearly contain white supremacist elements, many members believe the coming civil war will be a race war. Their main focus is strident opposition to government. While skepticism of government is undoubtedly a common sentiment, the Boogaloos have distinguished themselves by carrying out significant acts of violence in furtherance of this belief. For example, this summer, one Boogaloo, Stephen Carrillo, is alleged to have killed two law enforcement officers officers in Northern Carolina. So let's just step back and try to digest the information that we just took in. The FBI is concerned, possibly because they have informants within these organizations, that between the election and Inauguration Day, they are going to carry out acts of violence. Citing the presidential election as one cause for concern but also the COVID-19 shutdowns. Now, Trump has stoked fears with regard to both of these issues. You know, he lambasted the shutdowns happening in democratic countries or democratic cities across the country more specifically, but at the same time, he's constantly fear-mongering about the election. So if he tells people that he believes this election was rigged and Democrats committed fraud, this group, what are they going to do? That's a question like you'd hope Donald Trump as the president would be a little bit more mindful of this and mindful of the impact that he has knowing these far right groups love him and try to like tone down the rhetoric. But he doesn't do that. He still uses explosive rhetoric. And the problem is that it's not just this group. The Boogaloos is one of many groups that is basically standing by waiting for Donald Trump to just give them the signal to act. 
Oath Keepers is another group that may possibly do violence depending on the outcome of this election. So in a comprehensive article for The Atlantic, which I will encourage you to read because it is very long and detailed, Mike Giglio profiles Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes, who is already gearing up for a civil war. And, you know, he's not just like gearing up and preparing for one, actually. He believes it's already upon us. Like, he doesn't necessarily think that there's just going to be a single moment that catalyzes a civil war. He thinks we're going to gradually devolve into a state of civil war, and that's already upon us. Now, the group is mostly comprised of ex-military and law enforcement, and this article estimates that about two-thirds of the group is, in fact, ex-military and law enforcement, which is horrifying. And he views his role as the protector of Donald Trump, particularly from the Black Lives Matter protests, which he views as an insurrection. So if you already are an extremist who's on edge because of the protests and you think they're specifically there to undermine Donald Trump and your role uh, as you see it is to protect Donald Trump, what do you do when the president urges you to watch the polls? What do you do if the president says this election is a complete fraud? They're trying to do a coup. They're staging a coup against me. What do you think people like this are going to do? How do you think they're going to react? With how many far-right groups are gearing up for chaos? For Trump to use rhetoric that he's using? I mean, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say he is inciting violence. You have to tone down the rhetoric because violent rhetoric oftentimes leads to violent consequences. And to people like this guy, they view a civil war as an inevitability if they don't outright want one. So this is this is horrifying. They're ready to take to the streets and it's going to be Trump who, you know, fosters this environment where he tries to pit Americans against each other in a violent way and you have one side of the aisle willing to actually go to war with fellow Americans over this clown Donald Trump. They're just standing by waiting for the go-ahead. Now, speaking of standing by, of course, we all know now that Trump infamously told the Proud Boys at the debate to stand back and stand by. And um, unsurprisingly, they loved that. They're selling t-shirts saying Proud Boys, standing by. One of the organizers of the Proud Boys rally in Portland on Parlor says, Trump basically said to go fuck them up. This makes me so happy. So they took him saying stand back and stand by as an endorsement of what they're doing, as approval of what they're doing. And on top of that, Robert Mackey of The Intercept explains, the group's current chairman, Enrique Tario, a Cuban-American from Miami who attended the Charlottesville rally, also boosted an excited comment about Trump's apparent endorsement posted on Tuesday by another member who describes himself as a 33rd degree proud boy, as well as a right-wing death squad general, an Antifa butcher, a commie killer, and a BLM skull stomper. Tario, who spent a year in federal prison for his part in a scheme to rebrand stolen diabetic test strip kits and sell them online, wrote on his own parlor account that he was extremely proud of my president's performance tonight, saying that Trump did an excellent job and was asked a very pointed question. The question was in reference to white supremacy, which we are not. I don't know if a lot of y'all understand this or not, but come November, there's a war coming. Whoever wins, and it's down to two, we already know this, third party, they don't even matter. It's down to two. One or the other is going to win. As a certain supporter, we know which one's going to win. Trump 2020. But, there's a thing about it. The reason why I say there's a war coming is because if Trump wins... Black Lives Matter and all them other Antifa dumbasses are going to try to start war. We ready. Don't worry. We, we ready. Us rednecks and stuff, we ready for y'all. But if Biden wins, we coming. And we coming strong. So understand that these folks are hanging on every single word that Donald Trump says. They look up to him. They look to him specifically for guidance, which is why it is so crucial that Donald Trump speak with clarity and tone down 
the device of rhetoric. Otherwise, what's going to happen is Donald Trump is going to incite violence. And we could see violent clashes in the streets of America. Do you really want to see that? I think Donald Trump wants to see that, but I don't think the average American wants to see that. It may benefit Donald Trump to see Americans killing each other in the streets because he thrives amid chaos. But do Americans really want to see this? I don't think they do. No matter how far gone you are, no matter how deep you are in that right-wing bubble, there's no way you want to see this. There's no way you want to see Americans brawling unless you are just completely delusional. I mean, I'm sure there's certain portions of the populations who would love this, but most people don't want to see this. It doesn't matter where you are on the political spectrum. I don't care how right-wing you are. If the sight or thought even of Americans killing each other is something that seems appealing to you, I don't know what to say. You're just too far gone. And the right-wingers are the ones who claim to be patriotic. It's not patriotic to want to see a civil war. Now, I am not cynical enough to think that this country will devolve into an outright civil war. But still, like we're seeing the impact of prolonged political polarization. We're seeing how polarization transcends just the political and starts seeping into society and getting violent. And Trump, in one fell swoop, can easily stop all of this from happening. He just has to say, listen, we're going to accept the results of this election because we believe in democracy, and I'm going to peacefully hand the keys to Biden if I lose. And I expect Biden to do the same. He can easily do that. But he's not because he doesn't want to, because he wants them to do violence on his behalf. So this is deeply scary. The fact that you have so many people not just expecting a civil war, but pushing for it excitedly, it should make any American who's at least somewhat reasonable feel sick to their stomach that it's come to this, that we have to worry about whether or not the outcome of an election and what a president says will put us on the brink of a civil war. Like, what a dark time in American history that I hope we'll be able to look back on and think, wow, I'm glad we overcame that. 